For number one on lesson 12 practice problems, we've got a music store marks up the instruments it sells by 30%. <clears throat> so if it's a markup, it's a markup, uh, we're most likely going to use 130%. So we're going to want to find 130% of, of 45. I'm going to figure out what that is. So change that 130% to a decimal. You know, if you want to, you can put a decimal or put a zero there, times 45. And uh, when you do that, you should get, I think, a thousand dollars. No, it's going to be fifty-eight dollars and fifty cents. All right. If the price tag on a trumpet says 104, how much did the store pay for it? Okay. Again, let's let's put that into equation form. Now this time we're not going to do 130. We're not looking for 130 percent of 104. We're looking for 130 percent of what number equals 104. So we're we're not sure what that initial price is. So our equation is going to look like this: 1.3 n equals 104. All right, and now this is just a matter of dividing both sides by 1 and 3 tenths. So you do that, and you do 104. I'm going to do this 104 divided by 1.3, and you get 80. All right. Uh, what's number letter C? It says if the store paid 75 for a clarinet and sold it for 100, did the store mark up the price by 30 percent? And when I was helping out students with this one, they th they were saying no, but they were saying no for the wrong reasons. They were they were saying, well, um, <clears throat> it's just you know because it didn't go up uh, 30 dollars or something. I mean, that's that's not the right reason. Um, but if you want to know if it went up 30%, just all you have to do, all you would have to do is just do 130% times 75. All right, and if you do that, you'll notice that the that comes out to 97, I think it's less than $97.50. All right, which is not exactly, I mean, it's pretty close. It's pretty close, but it's not exactly $100. All right, so this would be no, okay? That's a no. Number two, a family eats at a restaurant. The bill is $42. The family leaves a tip and spends $40.77. How much was the tip in dollars? All right, now this is one of those problems where it's not directly given to you. You need to figure out what the tip is. You need to figure out what that is. So to figure out what the tip is, just find the difference of the total, you know, with tip. Uh, and take that away from the subtotal. That's the number without tip. And I'm betting that's the number without tax as well. It's a nice round number, so it probably doesn't have tax on there. But uh, just subtract that, and you're going to get $7.77. So you're going to get that. So that's how, how much the tip was, $7.77. Now, how much was the tip as a percentage of the bill? No, well, we're just going to do for that one, we're just going to do the part over whole times 100. That will equal the percent. So we're looking for a percent here. So the part in this problem is the tip, $7.77. The whole is going to be, and this is tricky, the whole is going to be 42. You know, and so remember, like, if you're ever curious as to what the whole is, you know, if you're ever like confused because it's it's a little tricky. You're not sure. Like, well, it's forty, you know, is it forty nine seventy seven? That seems like the whole. That seems like the bigger number, right? The bigger number is always going to be the whole, but that's after the change. Um, I always think of the whole as before it changed. Think of like the original number. All right, before tax was added onto it, or before the tip was added onto it, or whatever, before a discount was subtracted from it. But that's your whole. It's kind of like your original amount. And that's what you're going to want to use. So you're going to want to do 7.77. I don't think this comes out very clean, but I think, and then divide by 42. Oh, that does come out nicely.
times 100 times 100 and you get 18.5 so that's 18 and a half percent tip which is pretty good all right that's that's a pretty normal tip 20 percent you know anywhere between 15 and 20 percent is a pretty typical tip all right for number three the price of gold is often reported per ounce so at the end of 2005, the price was $513. Um, at the end of 2015, it was $1,060. It's a pretty good jump right there. By what percentage did the price per ounce of gold increase? So uh, for this one, we want to figure out the percent change. And um, so to figure that out, you're just going to, let's just take these two numbers and find the difference. So we're going to subtract them. So $513, we're gonna take that away from 1,060. All right, and that comes out to uh, 547. So that's $547 right there. And now we're just gonna do part divided by whole. So part divided by whole. So this kind of goes, goes along with what I just said about no, problem number two. So the part is 547. That's, that's, the, um, that's how much it changed by. And you'll notice that number was not given. You know, that was, number, that was not provided. That, that number we had to figure out. So a lot of times, like, you're not going to get the number directly. It's not going to come out and say, hey, this is the number. You've got to figure it out. So a little bit of problem solving goes a long way. And then on this one, the original price, the original cost of gold was 513. So you're going to do that. And so we're going to do, and then multiply that by 100, of course. So I'm going to do 547 divided by 513 times 100. And on my calculator, I got 106.62767. All right, something like that. And it doesn't really tell us, um, does it? It doesn't tell us what to round it to. It doesn't tell us what to round it to. So I guess I always like one decimal place. I think that's probably enough, I think, for some of these problems. Or the nearest hole is probably good enough, but I'd say it's about 106.6% increase. So that's a pretty good jump right there. It more than doubled. All right. Uh, for this next one, a phone keeps track of the number of steps taken and the distance traveled. Based on the information in the table, is there a proportional relationship between the two quantities? All right, so this is, this is a throwback problem. So we're looking back to a previous unit. And, you know, essentially if these both have, or if these all have the same um, constant of proportionality, if they all, they, they all have the same k value, you know, if you know, this is our x, this is our y, um, then we're good. But so, um, like right here, this is 1 over 950. Now I can divide that. I can divide that. I'm going to get like 1.00, I don't know, maybe another zero, but like 1.001 or <clears throat> it's going to be pretty small as a percent um, or as a, as a decimal. But the thing that, that I see right here is like if I do 3 over 2852, 2852. So if I do that, um, and and the first thing that like pops in my head right now is like if I do two two thousand eight hundred fifty-two divided by three, does that give us nine hundred and fifty? And it doesn't. It doesn't. Um, so if I divide that by three, I get. <clears throat> I mean, I get something pretty darn close. I get nine hundred fifty point six six six. You know, repeating. So 950 and two-thirds, which is really close, really, really close. And I'm betting the other one would be two, but this one um, is not proportional. All right, so there's no constant of uh, proportionality on this one. All right, last problem here. Noah picked three kilograms 
of cherries. May picked half as many cherries as Noah. All right, so how many total kilograms of cherries did May and Noah pick? All right, so that so if um, Noah picked three, so Noah picked three kilograms, and May picked half as much. That means May picked. 1.5 kilograms. All right, then that gives us a total, right? Just because it's asking how many total kilograms of uh, cherries did they pick? So that's four and a half. So that's going to be four and a half kilograms. 4.5 kilograms right there. So one one way you can kind of do this is just you know look for all the look for all the choices that give us. Um, an answer of four and a half. It was an answer of four and a half. So um, well, the first one gives us an answer of three and a half, right? That's three and a half. So that's definitely not going to work. Uh, B also, right away, you can tell that's not going to work. That's two and a half, right? That's two and a half. So that doesn't work. And then right here, uh, we're doing one and one plus one half, which is one and a half times three. One and a half times three. So off to the side here, I'm going to do that. So one and a half times three is going to be three halves times three, which equals nine halves. All right, now nine halves equals four and a half when I break it down into a, a mixed number. So that's not it. That's too big. That's too, oh, wait, <laughs> what am I doing? That is, that's correct. I was thinking in my head it was three and a half for some reason. But yeah, that, that works. Okay, good. All right, and then D... We got there for D. We've got three times, we've got to use the order of operations right here. And I mean, D is basically just like C, except there's no parentheses there. So we have to do that first. So that's going to be one and a half. And then one plus that is going to be two and a half. So that one does not work. All right. That does it.